Hey there, welcome. Uh, I'm glad to be with you today. Uh, we're here to talk about some Xamarin Forms 5. Let me see if I can get my slides going. There we go. Uh, so I'm David Ort now. I'm a principal program manager with .NET uh, working on mobile developer tools. Uh, so my responsibilities primarily are the uh, mobile and desktop SDKs used in Xamarin Forms and Xamarin. Um, so I spend most of my time speaking with customers, speaking with developers, um, and then working with our engineering team to conceive of the cool ways that we can help you. Um, so today I want to spend some time talking about what's new in Xamarin Forms 5. I know there's a lot of other great sessions and I hope that you're tuning in to all of those and uh, they're going to show you much cooler perhaps tips and tricks <laughs> that are really, really practical for your day-to-day -day usage. I'm gonna talk more high level about uh, the product itself and where things are at now and where things are gonna be going for you. So uh, let's get started. So I wanna start off by talking about why do we do this instead of that? Um, and this is something that, uh, you know, we want to keep at the forefront of everything that we're doing. Why are we doing it? Um, and are we actually hitting the target with these things? So we spend a lot of time uh, interviewing customers, interviewing developers, as I've kind of mentioned already, uh, doing surveys, uh, doing market research, and really understanding what's going to make the most impact for you and where you're most frustrated. Um, that we can alleviate that frustration and we can improve uh, the tools, the uh, components and controls that we ship, the, the uh, qualities of the product to suit you. Um, and, and you know, hopefully to delight you. And uh, from what we've seen, uh, it seems to be working. Uh, engagement is up in terms of people using the product. Uh, customer satisfaction, how we kind of rank are you delighted or not with the features of the product. Is it the highest it's ever been? So uh, we're really excited to see that over the years, uh, these, these things are trending in the right direction, of course. So what are those themes? Well, you know, when we look at what the themes are, who are we talking to? We're talking to large, you know, corporations like UPS, um, who has a case study up on our customer stories page. Um, and then there's the Valermos uh, app, which is in the upper corner there, which some of you may be familiar with. I believe it's in Spain. And uh, this is a kind of a coupon app from what I understand. But, you know, some of these, yeah, I look at that design and I'm like, wow, that, you know, uh, a year back, two years back, that would have been more difficult to achieve um, in Xamarin, but now super easy and, and specifically Xamarin Forms. Um, of course, you can always do these things. You get to go get a third party library, but I'm talking about what, what you can do in the core uh, set of components we ship. And then Blue Eye, which is the uh, cool looking game kind of thing at the bottom there. This is actually a control app. Uh, and they have several apps at Blue Eye that use Xamarin and Xamarin Forms embedding um, to control uh, underwater robots and uh, drones, I guess, uh, that can go and find submersible things. Um, they have one cool video showing a, a car that's upside down under the water. Um, so very cool stuff, heavy use of Skia Sharp. So, you know, as we survey those types of different apps, they're very different types of apps, right? Um, and they're very different types of customers. So we, you know, not every release is going to directly serve each individual customer, but we have themes um, that, that run throughout and we wanna make sure that we are serving those. So what are we hearing from you? What are we hearing from developers at large? Stability is the key, the foundation. And this is, you know, always present for sure. And it's always on our mind to make sure that we are not regressing, that we're solving stability issues, especially high impact issues. Um, but we want to make sure that when we're shipping features that we're driving them to completion. Um, we do tend to ship things uh, once we see that they are useful to you um, and, and are not completely lacking, but you know, there's always more to be done, right? We can always add another feature, another uh, control, another thing um, to that control and, and, and bring it to more completeness. Um, but yeah, we want to make sure that we're doing those things for you and we're listening closely. So uh, issue resolution, uh, removing the experimental flags, which is what we're going to talk a lot about today, um, what things are, have been experimental and how we're bringing those to stable release. Um, and then design. Uh, we hear a lot, hey, help me, help me more easily deliver a good looking app. 
um, help me more easily deliver an app that looks the same between Android, iOS, Windows, Mac OS. Um, help me to achieve X design that my designer gave me without needing to go find uh, a Skia Sharp solution or, and, and you know, hey, there's nothing wrong with Skia Sharp. That's a fantastic solution. And we highly recommend that everybody takes advantage of it. Um, but for some, it's, it's, you know, not the right solution for their problem. And so what, what are those solutions? Um, and so we've introduced several new things in this release that will help with the design. Um, and then productivity in general, how can I deliver more by doing less? Um, and please keep me out of the platform code, especially for things that uh, Xamarin Forms should just do. Um, so we hear that loud and clear, and a lot of the work that we've done to elevate things, uh, APIs into the controls themselves, as opposed to relying upon custom renders or effects or platform specifics. Um, are all, all things that we have been marching towards and we will continue to, uh, to work on supporting and uh, yeah. So let's dig into it. So quick recap. Um, what have we done in the last year plus? Because actually Xamarin Forms 4, which has been out in stable release since I want to say like build 2019, um, has been out for a year and a half almost, right? Or more. Um, so certainly fact check me on that. But uh, it's been a while. It's been longer than normal. Um, but that's because it's been a great release and we've been uh, packing a lot of great things into it, as you can see from this chart. Um, and I won't go over all of them, but, you know, embedded fonts, I'll uh, highlight a little bit later in a demo. Uh, drag and drop is in, uh, refresh view, radio button, multi-binding is in. So uh, definitely check things like that out. Um, GIF animations, you can throw GIFs into images now and have them play back. HTML, um, you know, a small subset of what is supported by the native platforms can be thrown into labels. So you don't always have to use a web view. So, so many great things. But, you know, the interesting thing is, is because, like I said, we want to ship things to you when they are uh, useful but continue to move them towards completeness, we've been releasing things under the experimental flag. So, you know, you have to go into your app.xaml.cs or your app.cs and say device.setflags, and then you pass in all the experimental bits that you want to take advantage of. That lets you early adopters um, take advantage of these things. And, you know, we mark them very clearly that they're experimental. The APIs might change. We're still baking things, um, but they can be useful to you. So, uh, here's a list of the things that have been in experimental. And in this release of Xamarin Forms 5, we're really driving towards that stability mark. And we're going to uh, be removing the experimental flag from these, which means we need to get them to a level of completeness. So what are, what are these controls? What are these features? So brushes um, is a really exciting one. I'm going in alphabetical order, not necessarily importance order. Um, and so this is linear, linear gradients, radial gradients. Um, it is solid brushes as well. And you can apply these to the backgrounds of pages. You can apply them to the backgrounds of many controls. <clears throat> and uh, as you can see here over on the side, you know, you can get a really nice gradient inside of a button, inside the background. Um, works really, really well. You just provide a bunch of gradient stops, the colors you want, and you set the offsets. It's really cool. Very easy to use, very simple, short syntax. Carousel view, this has uh, for years been something that uh, developers have asked for. And uh, if you work in a field uh, that is very visual, you find that uh, carousels are very useful controls. And having it baked directly in is really convenient. Now, there are still some great third-party controls that kind of go to the next level. And uh, certainly, you may find those to be a better fit for your app. But if, if you're building something, uh, I would start with this carousel view. It, it supports templating. It supports empty views. Uh, you can go vertical, horizontal. It's based on the same fundamental uh, basic control that uh, collection view uses. So actually, you know, if, if carousel view is not necessarily meeting your needs and you want to stay in the box, you can go to collection view and you can use visual states and transitions to really uh, achieve a lot of the same experiences and perhaps even more advanced uh, features. So uh, carousel views out there. You see a GitHub down here from DevCrux. Uh, this has really been a, a huge testament to the progress that the platform has made in terms of design, where you're seeing that uh, uh, a lot of our community, um, perhaps even those of you watching and listening today, have been sharing your your design experiments, your challenges, I think we're calling them sometimes, 
um, where you're taking a, a something from Dribbble or you're taking some other app that's out there in the world and you're saying, hey, can I recreate this in Xamarin Forms easily? And, and is it a delightful experience? And then sharing those. So I, I was super happy to uh, snag some of those and use them and highlight them here in this presentation to show that, hey, it's not just, it's not just me uh, doing these things, but I'm bragging on you, the developers in the community, showing what everybody has been able to do. Um, and so it's pretty cool. So check out uh, DevCrux for sure. There's several examples on that uh, GitHub. This is a relatively new thing, drag and drop, that we've added. Um, you could have always implemented, of course, your own drag and drop, and uh, there are some third-party gestures out there to help with that. Um, but this is now baked into the platform. It's a first party, first class, first all those things, <laughs> gesture recognizer. And you can see that I've got a, uh, a drag gesture recognizer on the buttons from the bottom. And then I've got a drop gesture recognizer on the stack layout, which is, which is what flips green there. And then I'm, I have uh, several events that I'm tying into. So when I drag over it, I'm changing the background color of it. Uh, and you can see that I can easily add things to that uh, container and remove things from the container. So very useful for dual screen apps where you might want to drag something from one pane to the other pane because we don't we all love the Surface Duo. I know I do. Um, it's a very cool device. Um, but for even for desktop apps uh, and perhaps even within mobile, this is a very useful control. So definitely check that one out. Uh, let's see, radio button. Um, and, you know, so the interesting thing about Radio Button, I get really excited about Radio Button. <laughs> and, uh, and, and I had someone tell me recently, this is not that exciting of a control. And I get that. But what's really exciting about it is this is the first control, the first baked in control in Xamarin Forms where we have elevated the control templates to the control itself. So you can use control templates today to control the full end-to-end -end design of a custom control that you yourself put together based on a content view, templated view, that sort of thing. But now in Radio Button, you can actually supply your own control template. So at the top here, you see the day, week, month radio group, if you will. And that's using an attached property, as you can see at the top of the XAML here on the screen. Um, and uh, so that's the default you get, and you can throw any text into that content property, and it will render it out appropriately. Um, but then you could also go to the next level here, as I've done at the bottom, and supply a control template. And this is based on the Fluent UI sample uh, for a choice group that I found up on the Fluent UI website to kind of demonstrate how really easy it is with these control templates to, to bring Fluent UI into your applications and style it appropriately. So very cool stuff, very flexible, very powerful. And uh, we're looking to bring this kind of thing in the next iteration of Xamarin and .NET MAUI into um, all of our controls, as many as we certainly can and would be useful to you. Shapes and paths, this is very exciting. And you know, this is an area where Skia Sharp has really dominated and been a great, great fit for a lot of customers. Um, but you know, each native platform has its own drawing APIs. So what Shapes and Paths does is brings all that stuff together so that uh, you can use a common API in Xamarin Forms to do basic drawing things. But even beyond the basic drawing things, um, you know, as you can see here, lines and ellipses, um, and you can even throw complex paths in there. So maybe you have an SVG, maybe you have a design from your designer, and you can grab the path code directly from that. Many times you can just right click on the design in the design tool, and you can grab the path data and then um, paste it right into your XAML. Um, and typically you need to kind of tweak the, uh, the path code slightly to make sure that it matches the syntax of what XAML expects in terms of capitalization, things like that. But the, uh, the data bit itself is the same that you would use here. Um, you can do the same thing with an SVG. You can open it up inside of a notepad or a VS code or, or whatever you prefer and paste it right in here and it'll render out beautifully as you can see on the screen. Um, so you can also do clipping with it, and I'll show that a little bit uh, later here in a, in a demo. Very, very cool stuff. Get your circle images. Uh, swipe view is another uh, very useful one in particular if you're doing something like you see on the screen here from uh, the GitHub link at the bottom. Uh, is you can have your, your left to right, your right to left, your top to bottom. You know, you can really swipe in any direction and reveal con contextual uh, buttons. 
And so those can be as simple as kind of what you see here on the screen where they're just colored uh, buttons with labels. Uh, but you can throw, again, it uses templating. You can throw any content into those uh, as you need. Um, so it can be icons, it can be font icons, it can be whole layouts. Um, you could have multiple buttons inside of that layout. Um, I certainly would caution against that, you know, make sure that it's right for your user experience. Um, but very flexible. And really this uh, swipe view, you can wrap any content that you need to uh, to achieve this experience. It's not just for lists uh, or collections, as you see here, um, but anything on the screen that you need to add a contextual um, action to. All right, cool. So that's kind of a lot of the experimental stuff in Xamarin Forms, but you know, I didn't cover some of the other stuff. So what is happening with C Sharp UI extensions? What's happening with Expander? Um, I didn't mention Indicator View, but that is in the box. What's happening with Media Element? Well, those, very exciting, dun, da, da, da. Uh, we are moving those uh, and working with the contributors to move those to the Xamarin Community Toolkit. So uh, several of these have already landed in the toolkit. Some of them are PRs in progress. Um, some of them are on the way. So certainly check the Xamarin Community Toolkit for the progress on this transition. Um, but we've moved several of those things over there. That's where they're going to land. Um, and the reason being is because these are controls that are still evolving, still growing. They have room to mature. And during the Xamarin Forms 5 release, we're really going to only focus on bug fixes, stability fixes in that release itself. So where do cool new things land? Where do cool new features and controls and, and, and innovation land? The Xamarin Community Toolkit is the place for that. That's where we can be baking these things because we're not going to have experimentals in the Xamarin Forms 5 release anymore. Um, so the toolkit is the place to be. So what else is over there? It's really a cool uh, toolkit. It was, uh, I think, originally started. James Montemagno put this together uh, a few years ago, and it had a, a nice short life there. But um, it kind of fell into, um, you know, obscurity. Really, people didn't really know it existed because then, you know, a lot of things came into Xamarin Essentials, and that's great because it's fully first-party supported, you know, and uh, it's got all the stuff you need for the cross-platform kind of non-UI stuff. And so now it's time to really reboot this Xamarin Community Toolkit. Um, Gerald Versluis, Stephen Thavison, um, Andre Misyukovic, uh, Jean-Paul Marie, uh, and many others have been involved. You can go check that out. Pedro uh, Jesus has been over there. Um, I'm missing names. I apologize. As soon as you start naming people, then you're like, oh, crap, I'm going to forget somebody's name, and now I'm going to offend somebody. Please don't be offended. Um, so many people have uh, been actively working on and supporting the Xamarin Community Toolkit over the past months, um, and it's really grown into a, a vibrant community. Haha, <laughs> community um, toolkit. So definitely check this out. Tons of behaviors, extensions. Um, we've got uh, converters, all the converters you can imagine in there. I mean, that byte array one uh, would come in really useful if you've ever done byte array, array work. Um, that's really cool. Um, item selected, uh, so many converters in there. I couldn't even list them all. It would have taken up too much space. Um, if you end up fighting a lot on iOS with the safe area stuff, there's some helpers in here and effects. Um, async command, observable range collection. Um, you don't know you need an observable range collection until you do, and then you go looking for one. Um, Camera view is actually in here too, which I'm really excited about because uh, we had a PR for that for quite a while on Xamarin Forms, but it's such a large PR, it was super hard to get through, and we were waiting for the new Android camera APIs to come out um, in Android X. So I'm excited that that's found a home um, because I've actually, it's like, it seems like almost every app that I end up writing and, uh, and doing something with ends up with a camera in it, not necessarily samples, um, but I love, I love having a good cross-platform camera. Um, side menu view, very flexible control from Andre there. Avatar view, yeah, so, so many cool things here. Um, and you should definitely check that out. Chief most among them, uh, C-sharp UI. So, uh, you know, XAML certainly is what most developers love to use. And uh, it is the happy path for sure in Xamarin Forms. Um, it's where we started with Hot Reload. Um, it's where a lot of our, if not all of our samples feature. Um, but, you know, that's not the whole story. Xamarin Forms originally started uh, with C-sharp syntax very similar to this. 
as the primary way in which you would describe your applications. So, uh, you know, there's still plenty of love in the world uh, for more than just XAML. Um, and C Sharp UI is a great one here from Vincent um, that showcases how you can have a fluent syntax to, uh, to describe your UI. Plus, uh, a lot of these extensions really kind of uh, shorten the verbosity of uh, the the UI. So, you know, you can specify row definitions by name, which is one of my favorite aspects of it. Then you don't have to keep worrying about, okay, what was the index of that row or that column, right? You can just call it by name using an enum. Um, and then you've got, you know, horizontal stacks, vertical stacks. Um, you can fill and expand just the horizontal, like that little helper here in the middle of the XAML. Um, just so many cool things. Uh, fully supports uh, MVVM, data binding, and things like that. So you still get all, all the functionality that you would expect to have. And you, can, you might say, hey, well, what about um, uh, hot reload? You know, you, like you just said, XAML hot reload is kind of where you started and, and what, what's supported today. So for C Sharp hot reload, Live Sharp uh, is a third party uh, solution out there. And uh, I don't remember if it's free now. It was free at some point. So check that out. Um, but it wasn't that much money. I know that, you know, money is money, but um, it's a great solution. Uh, it's fast. Um, and I found it to be very useful. Um, and there are other solutions out there that do support uh, C Sharp Hot Reload. Um, so you have options, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Um, Expander, this one's from Andre uh, Misjukovic, although this sample is from Javier Suarez Ruiz, um, our hero, one of many. Um, but this is a nice one. You can just wrap around any content and then you get this beautiful expand um, experience. And I believe he's even added additional easing. Um, I know that there's some easing things here on the screen. Um, you can also, I think, go in different directions now. I mean, this is, like I said, this is a, cont a control that continues to evolve and expand and uh, innovate. And so uh, it's best suited to be in the community toolkit where that can happen. Um, nothing uh, prevents anything actually growing from the community toolkit into Xamarin Forms um, and the next releases if needed. So um, a couple of things that are not in yet, uh, but we are going to be working on contributing to the community toolkit because we know from feedback that one of the most difficult things to style and to control the styles of are the tabs. Um, achieving even a, a UI like you see here at the bottom with a raised button can be a huge pain in the butt um, in, in native controls. You have to go into the native platform. You have to go figure out the native APIs for the UI tab bar controller and, and all the other platforms. So um, Javier has designed and built this cross-platform, put it anywhere you need to, fully cross-platform UI uh, fully supports control templating, tab view control. Um, sorry, that was a mouthful and a full run on sentence, more than full, it was run on. Um, and so with tab view, like I said, you can put it anywhere. Um, you can style it however you want to. It's fully cross platform. Now, the cool thing we wanna do with this and Shane and Javier are working together cause Shane kind of um, knows the most about uh, Xamarin.Form shell and Javier has built this tab control, is how can we make this a drop-in replacement into Shell so that you can just, boom, drop this into your app, put it wherever you need to, and then tell Shell, hey, when you're displaying tabs, use this tab view. Um, because I think that would be super powerful and it would solve a lot of uh, frustrations. How do you style the, the font of the tabs? How do you set the states and, and things like that? Which I will mention that Visual State Manager in Shell can totally uh, style all your tabs. Um, so background colors and things like that and swapping out of icons. You can do that today using the Visual State Manager. It's very, very powerful. Um, matter of fact, I think I even have a video up on YouTube uh, with Mike Parker that shows doing that. So on the other side of your screen is the app bar. Not necessarily the other side of the screen, I guess, depending on where you put your tabs. Um, but uh, typically, 
your app bar up there at the top and your tabs at the bottom. So having full control, especially of the content that goes edge to edge is, is a big request. We introduced a title view um, many releases ago, which allows you to drop arbitrary content into that title view space, but it still has limitations based on the native platforms uh, in terms of you know the back button, uh, any of the menu item buttons that appear in the upper right. And that was frustrating to many of you who were like, hey, we really need to be able to control every pixel of that title view um, or of the app bar. So that's what this uh, control achieves. You may or may not want to throw a bunch of multicolored neon hearts into the background of your app bar, but uh, hey, that's pretty cool. Could be like a Cupid dating app or some kind. <laughs> All right, cool. So that's slides. Let's go jump over to some demos, shall we? Let me boop, boop, pop open Visual Studio. Cool. Um, and then let me get my Android emulator up and going. And pardon me while I take a drink. Mm. Cool, cool. All right. Uh, so this is the app. Um, I grabbed this design off of Uplabs. Uh, it's a cool design, kind of shows... Uh, you know, some credit cards, so it's a nice design for that. I've got some font icons in here. Um, I've got my light theme and my dark theme. Um, I reversed that. That's the dark theme. That's the light theme. <laughs> um, I've got some shell in here. Um, I didn't. It's just one. It's a one pager, so don't get too excited. It's a one pager. Um, but, you know, it achieves a lot of different design things in here. I've got some clipping. Um, so let's take a look at each of those. Let's start with the uh, the app theme stuff, which has been in Xamarin Forms for a couple of releases, um, but the API did change. So when I click that uh, that light icon at the top, what am I doing? I am controlling the user app theme, and I'm checking it, and I'm just toggling between light and dark. Um, now, that's certainly one way you could do it. You can give that control to your user and let them determine hey, uh, do I want to be light and dark within this particular app? What you could also do is you could leave it at the default, um, and the default is OS app theme dot unspecified. And what's going to happen when I do this, of course, that's all invalid, um, but if I were to, and you don't have to, this is the default, right? You don't have to actually do this. But by default, what this means is that you're going to end up with uh, the app responding to the theme of the operating system that you're on. So this works on all the, all the different operating systems. Um, and when, you know, iOS goes from light to dark because uh, time of day, because of ambient light, all based on your preferences, um, then the app will respond to that. But, you know, if you want to opt out of that or let the user opt out of that and then control it themselves, you can do what I have here on the screen. So very flexible. And, and in terms of how you actually describe your colors and things like that, um, we have a handy app theme binding. I'm doing this directly uh, in the page here, but you could certainly do this uh, within your styles. If your styles are, you know, in the app XAML or um, in a separate resource dictionary somewhere else, um, you can do it there. And, but anywhere you need to do it, um, you essentially just say, okay, app theme binding, when this is in light, go here, and when it's in dark, go here, and then you can also have a default fallback color. Um, and then, yeah, as soon as you've done that, then everything takes over. Um, since we're on colors, let's go ahead and talk about gradients. So let's see, where am I using gradients in the screen here? So I have a gradient in the background of this card here. Um, I think that's a gradient in the background of that, although it's a little uh, transparent, so you can't really see it. And of course, that green is a background as a trans uh, gradient. Wow, words, they're so hard. <laughs> Um, so, you know, here are the two colors of my blue, or maybe it's this one, yeah, dark and light, cool. Um, and then I've got my green colors here. And so I, in my resources, I'm just declaring my gradient brushes. Um, you have a start point and end point. Um, so it's uh, coordinate based uh, from zero to one. And so I'm essentially saying start in the upper left-hand corner of the card and go to the lower right-hand corner. So you can see that it starts out light, Actually, no, maybe it's down here. <laughs> I think it is down here, isn't it? Um, so it's starting here and then going to up here. You can see my cursor, right? Yep, cool. 
Um, and then uh, where do you want the color to start? So I could bump this to, um, I didn't practice this, but if Hot Reload is doing its thing. So you could bump your colors and move the dark in. So that would put the dark starting halfway through. And then you could do the same thing with the light blue. Um, and you can kind of you know blend them however you need to. Um, if you've used any design tool, you usually have two sliders uh, in the design tool and or handles on a slider and you can move them around and just take those same values across a zero to one scale and apply it. Um, so to apply the blue gradient, for example, or let's go to the green one. So here's my frame for that green credit card. And very simply, just applying it to the background, just like that. Um, and now it's painting the background of my card. Works on all platforms using the native platform graphics APIs for those platforms. Very cool stuff. Um, another thing that you can do, or let's see here, let's talk about shapes. So did I define some shapes up here? I believe I did. Um, so I've got this rounded rectangle geometry, okay? Um, and so geometries are the shape prop, uh, types that you're going to use when you want to clip something. So in this particular uh, app, I'm clipping a couple of images. I'm clipping uh, my face up here in the upper right-hand corner with a circle or an ellipse. Um, and then I have some rounded clipping down here on these images. You can see that the corners are rounded slightly. So that's using this... Uh, this clipping, doo -doo, sorry, this one, the photo rect. Um, and so the photo rect is very simply, I'm going to provide it with the corner radius, and then I'm going to give it a rect. Um, that rect being a rectangle, so 0, 0, the x and the y, and then the width and the height, 44 and 44. Um, so if we use the handy dandy find, hello, there you go. Oh, it's there. Oh, I got to let go of the uh, control key. Of course I do. So I've got all those images down here, and you can see that uh, I just provide clipping. Now, I could, of course, uh, do this as well, um, as I could have my image, and then inside of my image, I can provide the rounded rec geometry right here. So if you don't need to use it over and over again or whatever, um, then you can just do this, right? Zero, zero, 44, 44. So that's very convenient. And actually, if I scroll back up to my profile image, that's actually what I've done up here. So this is me, my image. Does it actually have my name on it? It doesn't, it's just screenshot. <laughs> Uh, but it's coming off the blog. Um, and so that's my image up in the upper right hand corner. Actually, it's in the title view. Um, and I threw it all the way over to the right and um, with a grid. Oh, and that's something else I should probably call out attention to these handy dandy conveniences. Uh, no longer do I have to have tons of XAML to define a bunch of columns in my grids or rows for that matter. I can do it in this shorthand syntax. Uh, it was proposed a while back by Dot Morton, and then uh, we implement it. So uh, very cool. Uh, we implement it. Somebody implemented it. If it was contributed by you, I apologize for not giving you credit. It has been implemented. The royal we, the development community that is Xamarin Forms. <laughs> All right, so yeah, just as simply as that, I provide that ellipse geometry here, and uh, I give it the radius, and then I give it the center, and we're off and running. Oh, my fan just went crazy. Let me turn that off. Super annoying. This is what happens when you do recordings. Um, all right, cool, so that's ellipse geometry. Um, that's some of the shapes and path stuff. I've got a little bit of time left here. What else can we talk about? Um, I wanted to call attention to some of the things I have open over here. Uh, so you see that I've got all these fonts. So this is the new embedded font stuff. Again, it's been in uh, for a couple of releases. Um, but you know, you bring all these things together and it tells a really great design story in Xamarin Forms 5. So uh, essentially what you do is you drop these fonts in and you set the uh, build action to embedded resources. So now that they're embedded resources, 
whoops, come back to me. Now, anywhere in my code, I can use the assembly tag. And I could take this assembly tag and I could put it in the assembly info and I could drop it in here as well. I like to keep it with this icon font um, class because I end up copying this class around a lot. Um, as a matter of fact, you can see it's actually in a, in a different namespace from the project. Uh, but essentially, you just give it the export font, you give it the embedded file name, and then uh, you can provide an alias. And so if I go back to this page that we've been working in, and I do a search for font awesome, there we go. So my light bulb up there at the top, just to refresh your memory, this guy, uh, is a font icon. And so I have provided it into a label. Um, you can use this as well because we have the font image source. So anywhere you can drop an image in a Xamarin Forms application, you can use font icons as well. Um, and uh, yeah, so I provide the font family as font awesome. I don't have to do a resource thing. I don't have to have a dictionary. I just use the name that I gave it in the assembly tag, very convenient. Um, and then for the text, I do need to give the uh, the Unicode, I guess is what this is, right? Is that what you call these guys? Unicode? Um, I do need that, but I don't have to remember all that stuff. And, and I, you know, it's super, super nice to be able to actually see the name of what it is. So uh, uh, Andre Natescu has a website that you can upload fonts to, and it will generate these classes, these static classes for you. I apologize, I don't remember off the top of my head what the name of the website is because it's bookmarked in my in my browser. Um, but it generates this stuff for you. So all I've done over here is uh, I bring in that class in, using the XML and S, and then I can use my static class, just like that. So very cool. Um, all right, so that is uh, embedded fonts. And I have talked about linear gradients. I've talked about shapes. Is there anything else in here that I wanted to mention? Oh, I am using, you see these beautiful shadows. That is another control that I hope we can bring into the Xamarin Community Toolkit. Um, but right now I am using Jean-Marie's Sharpnado shades. So this provides those really nice shadows. Um, this is not a Xamarin Forms 5 feature, but I think it's worth it's worth mentioning because it's such a cool one. Um, and so you get these beautiful shadows that you can wrap around anything. You get tons of properties to go along with it. And you can see that I'm actually even, yeah, providing all the bits to render out those beautiful shadows. Um, now, the interesting thing about this is it is creating a frame around my frame. So it's not really... Uh, the most optimal usage uh, of UI. You want to make sure that for performance reasons that your UI is not too deeply nested. Um, and so that's something to be aware of, something to be on the lookout for if your UI is not displaying or rendering quickly in release mode with AOT. Um, then you want to go look at, okay, do I have too, too nested, too much nesting in my UI? Um, and so when we go to look at implementing a shadow, and Javier actually has a, uh, a um, prototype of this, um, is that uh, we want to make sure that we're not introducing new UI elements. I say all of that because um, clipping, for example, and I'm doing some clipping here on the progress bar. Um, clipping, for example, uh, should not add additional UI elements. So it's actually going into these elements at the graphics layer and applying these clippings. So, should be. Um, let's see, was there anything else I wanted to cover here? I think that's most of it. Let's jump back over to the slides and cover up some final details. And if I do remember something, I can just come back. All right, here we go. So .NET schedule, what are we looking at? Well, um, in November of 2020, coming up very soon, 
um, we are going to be shipping .NET 5. And so .NET 5 is the next major release of .NET All Up. And with it, you can get Xamarin desktop support. So that's WPF. The Windows team is working on lighting up UWP and WinUI for .NET 5. Um, so as soon as all those things are aligned and ready, your Xamarin Forms apps targeting desktop can leverage .NET 5 things. Um, and then uh, we're also, of course, shipping Xamarin Forms 5, which is what we're here talking about. So hopefully you're excited about that. <laughs> and then in November of 2021 is .NET 6. And it's at this time that mobile support is going to be introduced. Um, we have a branch today of .NET 6 things. Uh, you can go look at our .NET 6 samples repo on the Xamarin org. Um, but for us, what .NET 6 is all about is moving Xamarin into .NET. Um, so iOS.NET, Android.NET, uh, those things are now baked into .NET or, or you know, in the .NET org. Um, and then Xamarin Forms takes its next evolutionary step into what we've announced as .NET MAUI. And so you can really think of this as just, you know, you've got Xamarin Forms 5 today. Think of it as Xamarin 6. It's the next step of Xamarin. It's the next evolution. All your existing Xamarin Forms things will continue to work in this next version. Um, it is, it, you know, it's an evolutionary step. So um, we're not leaving folks behind. Yes, there will be a little bit of work in the migration. Um, if you uh, check out any of my .NET MAUI uh, information out there, whether it's on the wiki, there's a whole FAQ up on .NET MAUI repo. Um, we will be doing some blogging. Maybe there's some blogs out by now. Um, uh, there's also uh, some presentations that I've done elsewhere on .NET MAUI. Check those out. You'll get more in-depth information about it. It. It's not a big scary thing. It's a very exciting thing for Xamarin developers um, because you're, it means that there's a, a deeper, longer term timeline and investment into the technology that you're that you're taking a bet on. So we're really excited about it. Um, and so, yeah, that's what we're looking at for the timeline. And then we continue on. Uh, so over the next 12 months, uh, and more. Uh, you'll be seeing service releases to Xamarin Forms 5 as the stability continues to grow there. You'll see cool new things showing up in the Xamarin Community Toolkit. And then uh, we will start sharing previews and demos and things like that of the next iteration of Xamarin starting at .NET uh, Conf. Um, and then if you want to follow along super closely, uh, you can absolutely check out the GitHub um, both the Xamarin Forms GitHub, uh, there are branches where we are doing the work for uh, the renderers and the controls and all the upgrades that we're giving it. Um, and then we're also pushing that to the .NET MAUI repository. So cool. So that's kind of some scheduling related things. Um, I definitely want to call your attention to .NET Conf, which is coming up in just a few weeks. Um, so again, this is where we're going to be doing the .NET 5 launch. We've got some great Blazor demos. We've got some great Xamarin demos. We've got some future demos. <laughs> There's, it's going to be a great event. It always is a great event. Um, and it's, of course, it's always been virtual. Uh, everything is virtual these days. Uh, so, you know, I'm sure that uh, the team is working to make sure that this is uh, especially cool um, and a good event. So it'll be global. Um, definitely hope you all check that out. Um, if you want to learn about the future of everything.net, this is your day uh, to go check all that stuff out. So um, the .NET community is doing so super well, um, very vibrant, very active. Uh, I, I keep seeing some amazing apps. I showed a couple of apps at the very beginning of this presentation. That's just the tip of the iceberg of the cool things that I get to see on a regular basis. Um, I can only really share what's been publicly announced by those developers, which is why you don't see me sharing more. Um, but I encourage you, if you built something cool, go up to built, built with .net and make sure that it's referenced up there. Post that up there on that website. Um, so that everybody else can see the cool stuff. And then go up to uh, the Snippets website that uh, Gerald and Stephen have put together uh, and share all the cool things that you're doing. So with that, uh, I know I'm a little bit early, but uh, thank you for joining. Uh, it's been really good. Um, and I just want to reiterate just how excited I am uh, for the future of Xamarin 
at large. Um, you know, we've got iOS 14 is out. Um, we were there uh, 24 hours after Apple announced it with packages for running on iOS. That was super exciting. The tooling came out like only three, four days later. Um, at Android 11 support, Android X support, all the latest things uh, for Android and iOS are out. Um, we're working. We have a preview, uh, not a preview, pardon me. We have a branch building and running WinUI 3 things, which is the next level of what the Windows team is doing. Um, you've still got uh, plenty of Mac OS stuff there. And if you look at the repository, Mac OS, Linux, Tizen, WPF continue to get lots of support and love. So there's so many things that you can do with Xamarin Forms these days. It's really pretty mind blowing. Um, and you know, the APIs uh, are rich and growing and stabilizing. So uh, couldn't be more excited. As I mentioned uh, earlier, uh, I'm just thrilled to see that in the latest survey, the satisfaction is at the highest mark it's ever been, um, which is, you know, way up from where it used to be. Um, so we're heading in the right direction. Please keep your feedback coming. Um, send us chats here, send us tweets, send us, uh, make sure you're filling out all the surveys. Um, if you're open for having interviews and conversations with us, let us know. Uh, when you're facing challenges, let me know, let the team know. Um, certainly by filing issues, but feel free to reach out anytime. We're always eager to find out what you're building and what you're doing um, because we're not doing these things for ourselves. We're really, we're doing this for you. Um, I've spent, you know, 20 plus years out there uh, working for enterprises, working for agencies and creative shops, and then running my own business for 10 years. Um, so I know what it's like to not be in Microsoft. I know what it's like to be out in the world building apps. Um, uh, but, you know, it has been now three years, three and a half years since I was out there. So tell me what's going on. Um, help keep us on track and keep us honest and moving in the right direction. And you're definitely doing that. So thank you for that. Um, thank you for spending time with me today. Thank you for coming to learn about Xamarin Forms 5. Download it. Go into Visual Studio. Update your projects. Uh, let us know how it goes. If you're worried about updating to Xamarin Forms 5, just create a branch. Everybody's using Git, right? Just create a branch. Uh, Xamarin Forms 5 upgrade, do the upgrade, clean, delete the bin OBJ, reboot Visual Studio, check it out, build it, is everything good, um, and let us know. Um, definitely check the release notes. I should have mentioned that, should have put that in the slides, um, but because uh, there are some some changes in there to be aware of. UI Web View is no longer in there um, because Apple uh, is now rejecting apps, uh, new apps based on that. So you wanna make sure you're not using that. So we removed it from the release to help you out. Um, but there's some other uh, things in the release notes. So, ah, just so many, so many things to talk about. Uh, so now I'm rambling, but thank you very much. Enjoy uh, the rest of the conference. See ya.